let's get this party started, ladies and gents. All right. Let everyone just chug in. Been in the Zoom waiting room. Um, one eye on the market for me. Dial down a little bit. Uh, yeah, we've got CPI print coming up tomorrow, inflation coming up tomorrow. I'm just sc scanning through this book. Who's, who's read this book? Let me know if you've read this book. This is our good friend, Tom Hugard. Best Loser Wins. And actually, a little extract from this. Tom talks a lot about pressing winners. I need to get close to the microphone, don't I? Tom's, uh, Tom talks a lot about pressing winners here. He's a big advocate of adding to trades, which is kind of another level on holding trades. Today, we're going to talk about the psychology of holding trades, holding the winning trades. Um, you know, that that's what we really want to do. And yeah, great book, by the way. And you know that... You, you know, something Tom mentions here is, you know, the whole point actually, and this is not a promotion for Tom's book, but um, a lot of what he says here is based on his kind of observation of losing traders, so reverse engineering that, and that's sort of how he started off going down the journey of, hey, I need to do the opposite of what the majority of people are doing, and if I can do that, I stand half a chance of getting to where I want to be, and so many years ago, that's the kind of North Star he had. And one of the things he talks about, obviously, is running winners. And you hear it all the time, right? You hear it all the time. You read all the Market Wizards books. You read all the trading books. You watch all the videos. You've got all the courses. You run your winners. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about on the psychology of doing that. So some tactical ways to do that and the psychology, because I think you've got to have both, right? It's not an easy thing to do. It's not something that comes naturally to many traders. And so we're going to dig into that today. So uh, just looking at that, we've got here few people coming in still fine we're going to get going um what am i going to say yes we've got data coming out tomorrow a little bit of wobble today in the markets is active stuff going on um hope you're managing the risk effectively hope you are navigating things well there is a lot of stuff a lot of spice out there which means good thing for traders is we can bide our time be like a sniper just wait for the right opportunity we don't have to dive in you miss something fine. It's okay. There'll be another opportunity around. I remember trading, you know, back in the noughties when things had gone wild and then it just went quiet for ages. And you're like, well, it's frustrating because you're trying to, and if you miss a trade, then you've got to wait for a long period of time. So we're in a good, good environment at the moment. Uh, it's nice to, nice to be there. Okay. Risk disclaimers, you know, the rules, ladies and gents, hope you're familiar. You're all big boys and girls now spread bet CFDs, complicated uh, instruments. I won't read the whole thing, but please understand the risks that you're taking when you are playing this game. Um, and it's not a game, really, to be fair. Uh, you know, leverage works both ways. You can make a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money. Understand that the game you're playing or the uh, trade that you're taking and the risk that you're taking, more importantly. Okay, so psychology of losing trades. Uh, Jesse Livermore, quote here from the man himself. The big money is not in the buying and selling, but in the waiting. Now, you might think that Jesse Livermore was talking about waiting for the trades. And I believe he was to a certain extent, but if you read his book and you read it, I've made it, read it many times, uh, not his book, but his kind of biography that was supposedly about him. What we all know is about him. Reminiscence of a stock operator. It's like a book promo. It's like Amazon putting books out all over the place. Uh, he talks a lot about, Hey, just waiting. And when you're in a trade, holding the trade. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The psychology of holding trades, by the way, uh, if you're new here, how it works is this. I will talk for, 45 minutes or so, hopefully you'll find some value. Hopefully you'll take one or two things away that's going to help you move forward in your trading, just nudge you back on the right path, just get you thinking a little bit differently, overcome a hurdle, something like that. Because I know, and you know, that it's tough, right? We come up against these hurdles, we're spinning our wheels, and sometimes we're trying something, it's just not working. And often it's just hearing something a little bit different, listening to something, spotting something, just making a slight change of course that can help us go around an obstacle. So today, my objective is you go away at the end of this webinar with a few tips, tactics, tricks, psychological and operational that will help you hold the winning trades because that we know we have absolutely have to do that. And by the way, there's a Q&A button somewhere. You guys have used Zoom, and I'm sure you know where it is. Uh, Feel free to add your questions in there. And at the end, we'll get to that. I'll go through as many as I possibly can. I try and allocate enough times so that I can answer everybody's questions. And I normally do. I'm pretty good at it. I normally get through to everybody. Uh, and I'll help you if I can. If I can't, I will absolutely direct you to someone else who can. So, okay. 
or somewhere else that can. Right. Psychology of losing trades. Let's go. Of losing trades. No, 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 no. Psychology of holding trades. Mark, let's go. Okay, let's talk about running trades. So the maths of your strategy require it. What do I mean by this? You know, if you sit down and you work out how you trade and you work out your losers and your winners and you say, hey, I'm losing one hour here. And if I'm making one hour here, then, you know, I just have to have a really high win rate for it to work. And most people don't have that because there aren't many strategies that have that unless you're trading, you know, some kind of obscure strategy where a lot, put it this way, a lot of the kind of um, aggressively promoted, shall we say, strategies with a high win rate are adding to trades, are adding to trades and sort of hoping that they come back. We don't want to do that, right? We know, we accept that actually, you know, we're going to have a modest win rate and actually, um, if you dig into some of the kind of hedge funds and some of the you know long standing trend following models, I'm not saying we should be always trend following, but as an example, there was a oh, what's the name of the company? I've, I'm, I'm doing a little piece on my daily email. I do a daily email I send out each morning. I think it's Mulvaney Capital. I might be butchering that. Anyway, these guys are managing half a billion. They've been doing it for a while. And let me fast forward. No need to waffle about this. But effectively, what they do is they have a 80 percent losing rate but they run the winners when it's working. So why am I saying this? Why I'm bothering talking about this? Because it worked, Because that's what we need to do. We need to be able to run those winning trades for the mass to work. And think about the strategy you're deploying. You know that actually you probably have to hold those trades for multiples of the risk unit for it to work out in the wash. And so sitting down and going, this is my strategy. This is how effective it is on my sort of ex expected win rate on this and being honest about it and also looking at your history and then saying, actually, I need to hold these runners this to actually be effective. Because if I don't hold these runners, it's just going to tread water. And the danger you have is if you have a strategy that just treads water and you're not holding the winners, you will get frustrated and then your mindset will go to pot You'll end up doing stuff that you don't want to do. You'll end up trading uh, in a poorly disciplined manner. You'll end up over trading. You'll end up doing all the things that you know happen when you get frustrated. If you're like me, uh, you, you kind of sit there and you go, when you feel that frustration, you go, mm, you know what? This is when, this is the danger zone for me. And obviously, as you get more experience, you recognize to pull yourself away from the screens, but it's a danger zone. So you want to have those outliers so that you can trust the fact that your strategy is going to work out in the long term. You need to have the trades that give you multiples of R because also from a confidence perspective, right? If you're following a strategy and you should be pulling the trigger when X does Y, where it breaks out this level or pulls back to this point or pulls back to the VWAP or touches the open or whatever it is, whatever your strategy is, you need to have the confidence to pull the trigger with that hesitation knowing, hey, this could be the one that is going to kind of make the math of the strategy work out. So um, and also let the market pay for being correct, right? You do all the work, you do all the analysis, you prepare the trade, you've got your filters, you've got your triggers, the trade sets up, you've been patient, you come, you see the opportunity, you open the ticket, bang, you take the trade, you're in, your, your stop is in a structured position, your target's well prepared, you know, and then you're getting thrown out of it just when you start to see some unrealized PL that seduces you and you take the profit. You know, you're right, sit on your hands, let the market pay you for being right. Now, obviously, it depends on the time frame you're trading. But even if you're going down to the smaller time frames, it's still the same ethos of, hey, we're going to want to try to run these trades, try to one, run the right trades. Um, but not all trades are going to be runners, right? And the, and, the tr and the problem we have, and I'm kind of thinking back into my journey, sort of 10, 15 years ago when I had been trading for a while, and I kind of twigged, hey, do you know what? I, I need to be running these trades. I can't just be taking that profit, quick profit, and feeling good in the moment. Oh, you know, I've grabbed a bit of profit there. That's nice. And actually, you know, it's not about the profit. It's about the quality of the trade. And the trade may be showing a lot of unrealized profit, but if it's got so much more potential, then you're just, you're just chopping the legs off of the strategy. So, you know, not all trades are going to be runners. So what we first need to do is determine which is a runner. But first of all, let me just say this. We remind you, of course, I think it goes without saying, but I recognize as people from all experience levels here and watching this, we don't want to cut uh, winners short. We need to cut losers short. And we want to run winners. We don't want to run losers. Right? We're not holding on to losers here. And you've got to be careful saying winners and losers and uh, what have you. But you understand what I'm saying, right? You can't be having a trade that's not working for you and holding it out of hope. That is the worst case scenario. 
hopefully everyone's past that point now. We're trying to get to the next level of our trading is, hey, you can cut your losers, but you may be taking the winners too early, maybe chopping off a little bit too soon, maybe snatching at profits, maybe get a little bit nervous when the market starts to consolidate. We're going to attack that all now. But if that's you, then you know this is hopefully going to help you out. Okay, so first things first, and I don't think many people cover this, but from a trader to another trader, knowing what it's like on the front line, knowing what it's like when you are operating and you are allocating risk capital to an idea, not all trades are going to be a trade to hold and run. Okay. And I think this is this this will get you most of the way there in terms of the psychology. I'm going through some tips and ideas and stuff in a, in a moment in the later few slides, in the last few slides, should I say, when we talk more about that. But not all trades are going to be trades to hold and run. And why is that? Because some trades are structured, you need to structure them differently. Okay, can I call these like A to B trades or level to level trades? Some people call them. In other words, you, you're buying buying a support, you're selling at resistance, or you're you're buying a, you know, let's say you're buying an exhaustion flush, something I quite like to do when the opportunity is right. You know, you're not looking for it to be a full trend reversal. You're looking for it to mean revert back to a moving average or a VWAP or an open. You know, if you're trading as the market's in a range bound environment, you'll probably just want to ping pong back and forth in the upper and lower levels of the range. You're not necessarily front running a breakout. Maybe you are, but you need to distinguish that beforehand. So how do we determine uh, which is which? Okay, let me... Um, Give an example. Here we go. I thought I had an example here. Great. So USD, JPY, many of you train Forex. This isn't, okay, obviously there's exceptions and we, and we're we always generalizing in trading. There's always exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, if there's a chart you're trading, you're trading on a five minute chart, you're trading from the top of, top of the rectangle to the bottom of the rectangle. And yes, I've just cherry picked this and I've just shown it for a perfect example. And I know in the real world, we know we can't always get the top, we can't always get the bottom. And someone says, just sell the high, just buy the low. But let's say you were trading that way. Let's say you'd bought this little fake out to the downside. It's still within your rectangle. You bought this ignition bar. You stopped us below the low. You might not be holding for a full move back up to try and tag or to take for a breakout of multiple year highs. You, you might be like, hey, listen, I just want to trade back to the midpoint of this range that we've been in for the day, which is sitting here at 150, 135. Should have zoomed in a bit on that, but take my word for it, that's what it is. You know, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't be looking for anything fantastic or anything magnificent from this trade. In which case, this isn't a trade that you suddenly decide in the heat of the moment, I'm going to hold this, I'm going to hold this, I'm going to prove that I can hold a trade. You're holding the wrong trade. So make the decision before you take the trade and make a firm decision. I am going to hold this trade for X, Y, Z, and we'll go through what X, Y, Z could be, X or Y or Z could be, or I'm going to cut this at the level. It's a level-to-level -level trade. It's an A to B trade. There's no right or wrong, but the problem comes when we as traders go, we flip-flop back and forth. You know, one minute we're, we're, we're taking quick profits, the next minute we're running trades. You need to be decisive about when you're going to do, when you're going to deploy what uh, tactic. So which tactic should I say? So are you going to hold the trade or are you not going to hold the trade? And that should be planned out as well, depending on the trade type you're taking. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole massively, but the importance of a trading plan is like, hey, if you're taking those mean reversion type plays, which this would be a great example of, let's say you're taking it down there at 150, 115 for a pop back up to what you have established as the mean, that midpoint at 150, 135. That's a mean reversion trade. It's a clear A to B type trade. There's probably nothing extra in it. And that's the way that you have to frame it. And so it's very important to do that because that's what kills traders the most or, or ruins this, 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 this skill the most is the flip-flopping back and forth of one day you hold it and you hold it, it comes back and stops you out. The next day you cut it and that's the one that runs. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying that's not going to happen to you still to some degree, but having a plan of action and saying, this is the type of trade I'm looking to hold for a further trade, trend extension or a further breakout, or whatever it is. And so I'm going to exercise my holding skill set or my holding muscles, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, in that trade. So just understanding that I think is so, so key because it lifts the burden, right? If you're in this trade, 
I won't kind of I won't dwell on this too long. Um, if you're in this type of trade and you're saying A to B type trade, I just want to take A to B type trade, me reversion trade, ping pong back and forth in this example. You know, you you lift the burden off trying to run the trade. Because if it then goes off and rips off the stratosphere, you go, well, that's fine because I'd already planned to just take that profit. I'd already planned to just bank that 20 pip profit. I wasn't looking to be a hero on this. And whereas if you haven't got it planned and it rips off to the stratosphere, humans have a great way, especially traders have a great way of saying, oh, I should have told you so. You should have held that trade, man. You're a really, really bad trader. And we end up going down this kind of pathway of stuff. So define beforehand the trades you want to take uh, as an A to B type trade or a trade you want to hold. Okay. Um, I'll get to the questions at the end. I think these are all kind of questions I can I can answer at the end. So yeah, just stick them in the Q&A. Thank you, ladies and gents. All right, so some are runners to hold, okay? And you need to determine, well, you don't do anything, but I like to determine, you can, maybe you can you can take the uh, you, on board as well. What are you going to, how are you going to hold this trade? So another uh, trap I think that we all fall into as developing traders, beginner traders, and I still see it, um, you know, with developing traders now is I'm going to hold this trade. I'm going to hold this trade, right, to when? I'm just going to hold it. Okay, but, but, but when? Well, like, if you've got an idea, I'm just going to hold it as far as it goes. Well, that's not enough. We need some specificity. Again, this may not be where you end up as a trader. You might end up being a little bit more flexible, and that tends to be what happens, by the way, guys. You have really fixed rules in your early years, and as you become more experienced, like five years, 10 years, 20, 20 years, you then say, right, I'm okay with my rules and I'm a bit more flexible because I know the rules that are there to serve me. Uh, I've kind of built this mem muscle memory up. I'm not going to go crazy uh, and I've got a risk parameters, but maybe I'll be a bit more flexible. So is it a specific price target? Is it a period of time? Or is it something like I'm going to get taken out by price action? Again, clarity is the absolute best friend of a trader in all aspects, by the way. But in this specifically, if we're trying to hold our runners, Ask yourself the question, okay, when, how far am I going to run them? Am I going to hold it until the next decade? Probably not. Am I going to hold it to the next minute? No, probably not. Right. Is it a specific price target? Is it based as your reverse engineer the trade um, from a, a from a target? So something, again, let's go off topic slightly. Something I like to do is to kind of work backwards from, I believe the price is going to go here to here. Okay, so work backwards. So where's my entry going to be? So I already know roughly where i want the trade to go and that might be a specific price point right and i recognize it's tough and i recognize not everyone does it this way but it's one way to do it that's my price to target and i'm going to hold it until that another one which is a bit i think is a very powerful one is a period of time why is this powerful because it helps you just go you know what i'm going to hold this trade for an hour let's say if you're a day trader or two hours or until the end of the day if you're a day trader or for the next 15 minutes, it doesn't matter what the time period is, but you know, based on your observation of price and your screen time and all the stuff trades you've done, how the market moves. Sometimes it has to take some time. So it's going to go from one level to the next level instantly without any pullbacks or any consolidations or backfills or congestion at all. It, sometimes it doesn't. It's very nice if it does. Thank you very much. But we know the market doesn't do that. So we have to give this market time to mature, have to give it time to do all the things it needs to do to get from point A to point B. And so very often a way to say, I'm going to hold this trade is I am going to hold this trade for one hour. Or I am going to hold this trade until the end of the day. Let's say you're a day trader. I give you an example. You're a day trader. You've bought uh, NASDAQ, right? You've bought the NASDAQ. It's flushed down at the open. You've got a beautiful entry and it starts to pop back up. And you've already planned this trade and you say, listen, I think we're in a bullish environment. I think we close at highs. I'm going to hold it till the end of the day or I'm going to hold it until the midpoint of the day. Maybe I'm going to hold it until the European close, whatever it is. That's an easy thing to do because you can set your alarm and you can go away and you can come back and then you can say, right, I've held that trade. I've let that trade mature. And that time period is based on your experience of how long these trades take to mature, how long they tra take to develop. Okay. Final thing is you could hold on um, until you get taken out by price action. Again, clarity is required here. Don't give yourself a get out of jail free card by saying, well, oh, I'll come out when the price looks like it's going to reverse. That's okay 
if you are if you are experienced at running trades and you know it's not an issue for you but if it is an issue for you that is the worst thing to do because you will justify you closing the trade early and i know you've done that because we've all done it price has gone up and you go oh it looks like a reversal candle has that an inverse head and shoulders is that is that is, is that is that a kind of fake out oh look you you end up justifying it because i can find any reason now why market is bullish or bearish you know you can so that makes no sense. You have to have clarity and say, right, the price action that I will see to take me out of the trade is, let's say you're in an uptrend, it will be a lower high over an X minute period. It will be when we cross back below the 20 period moving average. It will be when we get a flush out candle to the upside. It'll Whatever it is, right? You can go for a city of rage just talking about the price action type candles, patterns or whatever it might be, but just be clear because then you know, you're like, right, when I see that, I'm going to come out. If I don't see that, I'm not going to come out. I'm not going to come out for any other reason other than that. So it's the clarity and specificity that makes the difference here, ladies and gents. Okay, so uh, example here. Now I'm just going to run through this in a moment. This is, I think, if we're looking at these two um, charts here, five-minute chart of yen, USD, JPY, being pointing back and forth in a range. And then here we have SPA or US 500, if you're trading on the Pepperstone CFD, just a complete capitulation. That was, remember, if you're trading that, well, it was uh, uh, Fed, what well, the guy's name now coming out saying, no, we're not going to cut rates, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, but whatever it was, the point is, you know, if if you're planning it differently, you're saying, hey, this could be a trade to hold to the end of the day, or this could be a trade to hold to Lex. I'm going to go through this as an example in a moment, but a very different distinction of how you're approaching the market. Okay. So uh, the trick is, I believe, to be clear beforehand, decide which trades are A to B, which are potential runners. Don't leave that decision open-ended, as I say. And it just removes the element of right or wrong. I, I, I don't think I mentioned this. It's actually a very good thing to, 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 to point out, is you, you need to really consider how you frame a winning and losing trade. If, as human beings, we have a tendency to say, that lost me money, that was wrong. That made me money, that was right. And that thinking doesn't serve us as traders. It doesn't serve us when we start to size up the operation later on, but it definitely doesn't serve us when we're trying to get from developing to consistency. It, it, we need to change the language. And when you can say to yourself, hey, I'm just holding this trade, and that whether it goes to the target or not, it doesn't matter because as long as I hold it, that's the job well done. And it's the process-focused objective and kind of staking your – um, worth as a trader in the process as you're developing rather than the PL that allows you to unlock and remove that burden of pressure of performance. You know, just again, going off topic a little bit, a little bit here, you know, as a trader, when you are developing and you are kind of trying to get from, you know, to the next level and next level, the next station, move things up a notch, you know, focusing on how you perform as a trader in your process. Do I stick to my plan? Am I holding a trade I said I was going to hold? Am I taking a trade off the level I said I was going to take it off? Am I doing all these things that I should be doing? Well, that's your status and worth as a trader. Don't worry about the PL for now. Later on, the PL becomes important. Of course, it does. It's the metric that we're all looking at. But when you're developing, all you do is just de demotivate yourself. So, something to consider is being process focused. And especially if you're holding a trade, holding or attempting to hold a trade or holding a runner. Like, hey, I've identified this as a runner and I've held it. And yeah, I've been stopped out, but so what? Because I've done what I said I'm going to do. And actually I can go back now and go, hey, well, I'm misidentifying those runners. Am I trying to hold runners that actually aren't really, they haven't got the tendency to be runners? Am I expecting too much from the market? And that's probably another topic of, you know, what sort of target we're looking for. If we're trying to calibrate it to an ATR, are we kind of taking into account the volatility of the instrument we're trading, et cetera. But Let's keep things simple for now. The trick, again, is just to be clear beforehand, right? Okay, so how? Make a decision and plan the trade. It's really that simple. It's just a mental game. And is it deja vu? Because the whole trading is very, very mental, right? Your self-talk needs to be on point. You need to make the decision and plan the trade. And by the way, here's a little uh, a tip. I don't know if I'm using that word, but... I think this will help you with decision-making and trading. Now, when you're about to take a trade, I think this is the same for entries, exits, everything. When you're about to make a decision in your trading, 
you should have a decision flow chart in your mind, even written down, where you go, right, what are the things that I'm looking at that help me make this decision? And that's it. So normally it's three big things. And so, for example, let's say we're using it on the context of we're looking for a price target, right? You're in the trade, you're like, okay, what's my price target for this trade? You may go, what, what's the daily chart looking like? Because the bigger, higher time frame sentiment is important to me. You may be an intraday trader, but that might be looking at. You may then say, well, what's the ATR of the day? What's the expected range of the instrument I'm trading today? It's 100 pips. We've moved 50 already. Am I looking for too much? No, I'm looking for a right. And your last, your, your last kind of uh, decision make your decision point might be, what, what's the trend on the day, and what's what's the what's the sentiment of the day, or whatever it might be, and then you stop, and then you say, right, those are my three key points to make the decision. Now I've got a very limited time to make the decision. I don't bother about dwelling on it and flip flopping back and forth. Thirty seconds, a minute, make the decision and make it with clarity and certainty, and say well, that's the target for the trade. Done. Once you've made the decision, once you've made that decision, you flood yourself with certainty about the decision. You've got your risk protected. You've got all the all that kind of dealt with. What happens happens now. The worst thing you can do, especially in the trading world, is flip flop back and forth and second guess and go, oh yeah, but look at the VIX. Oh, but look at gold. Oh yeah, but CPI is coming out here. Yeah, but the MACD is doing this. But the Bollinger Band. Stop it. If that's important to you, you'd plan beforehand what that metric and variable was to make the decision. So three key points, make the decision, have clarity, say, that's my target. That's what I'm holding for. Whether it's holding for a price target, whether it's holding for a period of time, whether it's holding for whatever it might be, or whether it's an A to B trade, but make the decision and stick to it because that will serve you so much better. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about self-talk. So, you know, we're all bad at this, aren't we? Right. We're all our worst enemies when it comes to self-talk, especially in trading, you know, the language we tend to use, especially as a developing trader, I think you get kinder to yourself and recognize that you've been through the mill and all this stuff has happened and you kind of have to be a little bit calmer on yourself. Um, it can be pretty brutal, right? Because generally trading attracts you, which you're driven, you're ambitious, you attract that type of person. So for most, a lot of people, it's like, well, come on, get going, get moving, get, don't quit, keep going. I think most traders have that already, and they swing to the other side where they're too harsh on themselves. Yes, this, and you're effing, and you're this, and that, you, blah, 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 beep, 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 beep. You've probably done it, right? So you can't, you really can't do that. You have to say to yourself, listen, when I'm in the trade, and I said I'm going to hold the trade, I know I'm going to get the urge to close it. It's not going to go. It's not going to go away. Just have suddenly planned to hold a trade to this point. You're not going to suddenly get the urge to look at that unrealized peel and go, "That's all right." That should I take it? And then you justify the reason to take it by kind of looking at the chart, price chart, and going, "Yeah, but it's stalling." Or uh, you know, to move. No, no, no. You know you're going to get the urge. You know you'll be bursting to close it because that's what you're trying to get rid of. You're trying to get rid of that kind of desire to close it and shrug your shoulders and go, whatever happens, happens. So practice the self-talk, right? And the self-talk might be, yep, I want that unrealized in my account, but I need to move forward. I've said I'm going to hold this trade. That unrealized profit is nice. I would get a dopamine hit from hitting close and banking that profit, but I plan to hold this trade to this level. That's why the planning is so important because you can tell yourself that in the trade and say to yourself, hey, listen, fine. Yeah, then realize it's good. That would be nice. But I'm trying to get to the next level, the next station in my trading, which is holding trades to a future target, to a higher target, run that winner. So I need to think carefully. Am I going to just take this trade off and just do what I've always done and get the results I've always got? Or am I going to stick to this trade and hold it? And it's that self-talk that you can practice before the trade that helps you in the heat of the moment. Because you know the language of the dialogue. You're watching the trade. You're going, oh, yeah, well, I should take it. Oh, you know, oh yeah, I'll, I'll just take that. You can't go broke taking a profit. All the other nonsense that you tell yourself. But if you're trying to hold a trade, as long as you've planned that, this is why planning is important. Again, repeat myself a little bit, but you can see now why it's so important. Because when this, when the desire and the urge comes to take the trade off the table, you can practice that self-talk and say, "Yeah, you know what? It'd be nice to bank that profit, but I'm holding to this level. It might hit, it might not, but let's see. That's my plan." Okay. So, how do you do that? What other things can you do practically 
to help you prepare for holding trades. Easy one is to create a spreadsheet with your numbers on, right? And what I mean by that is saying to yourself, hey, listen, I know I need to hold the trades for my strategy to work. And what I mean by this, I don't know if I explained it well enough, probably not. But what I mean by this is, you know, looking at your strategy and saying, right, what's my risk? You know, what's my reward on the trades? How have I, how do I normally perform each day? And going back and looking at all the days you've traded, and if you like, well, I'm down 200 bucks, I'm down 500 bucks, I'm up 200 bucks, I'm down 500. And you look at it and go, well, actually, look, I need to have a decent day to overcome these losing days so that the week is profitable. You know, whatever, you, just something logical is really, I guess, a better way of framing this. Something logical you look at and go, hey, these are my trades. If I have 50% losers, 50% winners, and I have a four R here, four loss, and I get one here, it needs to be three R minimum. You can look at the spreadsheet and go, I need to hold these trades for this strategy to work. Otherwise, I have a negative expectancy. What's the point in me trading this? And even silly things, I know it seems stupid, but keep reminding yourself in places outside of trading, I'm going to hold the trade. I say I'm going to hold. I'm going to plan. And my purpose this month is to get really good at holding the trades that are working. And these are my tactics for doing it. This is my operational way. This is my mindset way. This is going to blend together to help me hold these trades. Drum it into your brain. I'll hold the trades. I think it is, I think what I put there, I will hold the trades. I think I deserve it. I think deserve it. I don't know what I'm supposed to put there. Anyway, it's the trade I want to become. That's the most key part of this slide. I'm trying to become a trader that holds trades, that relaxes into winners, that doesn't get seduced by unrealized PL and snatch at profits, that holds trades to fruition. Now, you're going to get trades that do go all the way and then come all the way back. In fact, I had one the other day. We were in, in the Dow, we're almost 40,000. We're hitting up there. I can't remember where my limit was. And it came all the way back down. And we've kind of full reverse. So you go, you know what happens? It's, and it doesn't bother you when you've had it from many, many trades. Get to that in a moment. But here's some ways to hack, hack, hack your way to holding. Create a high watermark. So what I mean by this is, if you've never held a trade, an easy way of a really quick and simple hack is to just hold a very small position for a period of time, longer than you ever had before, a week, a day, whatever it might be. Now you've got a new benchmark, right? And you've proven to yourself you can hold a position. Yeah, sure, it's very small. Yeah, sure, it might not be within the strategy and, and kind of ideas that you've had, but just doing that kind of just breaks that ceiling of, I can't hold trades, I'm struggling to hold trades. Well, actually you can because you've done it. You've held a trade for a whole day, and it might be very, very small, but you can do it. You've proven you can do it. So that nonsense you tell yourself, I can't hold a position, I end up, to, it's not true. And so just creating that new high watermark of, hey, I've held a trade for a week, or I've held a trade for multiple hours, or whatever you're trying to achieve in a very small position, just a nice, easy way of kind of hacking recalibrating is probably a better word the way you think about stuff so yeah i actually thought this slide was 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 next but i mentioned before except the worst case scenario this is important this is really important you have to be prepared i believe for the worst case scenario and the worst case scenario is that trades will go all the way up to your level almost touch it reverse all the way back down stop you out now it might take a full stop you might have dragged the stop up whatever it might be accept it and bathe in it and what i mean by that is that you have to trade differently from the crowd to get different results the crowd will go on tilt with that the mob the gang whatever you want to call it the, the, the average trader it will annoy them so much, they'll end up doing stupid things. They'll revenge trade, they'll FOMO, they'll trade more size. Like, and maybe you've done that. I have done that in my early years, 2003, whatever, some revenge trade all over the place. But if you can accept it, and the time, and you know what, this, this is a little subtle, subtle thing, which is a real game changer. When something you feel is really bad luck happens to you, like the market going all the way up to your limit, coming all the way back down and stopping you out, not quite tagging you, you need to go, all right, it happened. I would have loved that p &L. Of course I would have. But you know what? I get to experience something that hardens me and builds me. It builds my resilience for more times like this. And so you can say, all right, 
thank you very much. I'll take it. And it stings. And I would have so loved to have just pinged myself out the top of that move there. And I would have felt like a genius. And I'd be sitting on that PL, but I didn't. And it's almost like the worst case scenario. It went right up to the tick and came all the way back and didn't feel me. But I get to experience that. And so the more you experience things, the more it becomes like, yeah, who cares? It happens. It's happened to me before. And so when you start to improve your trading, you start to grow your size and all that other stuff, you go, I've been here before. I've seen this movie. It doesn't matter. It doesn't phase me. Keep chucking grenades at me. I can take it. No problem. And so this is this kind of thing, a way to reframe things that happen to you in the market that feel like bad luck. Okay, so... Worst case scenario, accepting that. And then when you do get on one trade and you run the trade, leverage on it, right? Use it as a confidence booster. Here's another little hack as well. Don't keep using that word hack, man. That's not a life hack or something like getting some sort of uh, whisk and putting it with eggs and doing this and making your bed with it, whatever life hack is. But what you want to try to do is this. You know, when you get a good trade and when you hold a trade and it hits that final target, Close the trade and don't trade for a while. Could be a few hours, could be a day, whatever it is. Marinate in that confidence because when you're a developing trader, the mental capital is just as important as the financial capital. Yes, you want to protect your financial capital. Of course, you can't trade without it. But the reality is there's two ways people get knocked out of the business. One is they lose all the money like, Sort that, I'm out of here. The other one is they just lose the motivation, lose all the will to carry on. And maybe they're still okay, the capital hasn't drained, but the mental capital's been exhausted. So you need to do something sometimes that aren't logical, and it makes sense. They're not about generating alpha and generating return. It's about making you feel good and boosting that mental capital. And one of the things you can do is, not always when you just hold a trade, when you've made a good trade and you feel good, just shut everything down and just feel that confidence and go, yeah. That's a damn good trade, man. I hold that from there to there. It was a great trade, executed beautifully. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing better to boost your confidence and boost your, you know, your mental attitude to trading than having a trailer like that on a Friday, shutting the books down and bathing in that all weekend. Because that just boosts your confidence. Every time you think of it, you're out and about the weekend, you're on a walk at the shops or whatever, it just comes to your mind like, yeah, man, that was great. And and yes, okay. The argument, you know, it's, well, if you, sh you shut, cut your trading short when you're on a run, you know, you're not going to make as much money. It's not, the, not always the, it's not always the final destination. Yes, it's important later on, but actually building the confidence and keeping that mindset strong is one of the most important things uh, as a trader as well. So, you know, when you get on one and it's working, take the trade off, hit your target, and just use a confidence booster because you can always. Also, the final thing on this is. When you've done that and you feel great about the trade, you can always draw on that in the future when things aren't going your way. You go, listen, man, back there, I held that trade. I held that trade. And it was a damn good trade, so I can do it. All right, so uh, you look at, I'm just running through this quick example uh, with you. So when we had that sell-off, um, and I actually ran through this in detail. And if you're on my daily email list, you go to tradersmastermind.com forward slash email. I think it's that. If you go to tradersmastermind.com, you can you can sign up for that. Send an email every morning. And one of the things is dissecting this. How can we get better at trading these heavy down days? Maybe you're trading Forex this day. Maybe you're trading something else. But equity market tanked right off. And why I kind of I went through dissecting kind of how we could trade that better. And you know, I do it for myself, my own performance. I can trade that better. How can I get more size on all this type of stuff? But if you are in this scenario, and let's say you shorted at one of these points. You should have already planned, hey, this is a trade to hold. Now, if you decide it was an A to B trade, that's fine. You do that. You say, hey, I'm taking it from 18200 to 18100, whatever, whatever reason that is, and that's how I'm trading it. But if you decided you were going to hold a trade, you have to be able to say, hey, this isn't going to go in a straight line. It's going to wobble. It's going to backfill. And even this is a really aggressive downtrend. Even this has periods of time where it's rallying, periods of time where it has a really big run from low to high. And if you're kind of watching every tick, you're like, oh, man, I realize PL is disappearing. It's just relaxing and going, I'm going to hold this till the end of the day. Or I'm going to hold this till eight o'clock or whatever it is. And just saying to yourself, keep repeating, this is what I'm going to do. I've decided I'm going to hold it. You know, there's no need to get kind of spooked out by anything. Okay, so some other little hacks just to help you hold the trades, with the planning, all this type of stuff. Walking away. Simple. You've heard it before. Super powerful. Walk away. Get away from the screens. 
You know, if you're on a diet, you don't sit there in front of a chocolate cake. If you're trying to stop smoking, you don't sit there with a pack of cigarettes open. If you're trying to stop drinking, you don't go down the pub and sit there. You get my point, right? You are not trying to make life hard for yourself and play the game on hard mode. Walk away from the screen. Remove the urge to, to, to kind of take the trade off. Use a timer. So I always got a timer on my desk. This is here. And the way I use that is for many, many reasons we're trading, but one of them is to say, just give yourself another 30 minutes. Just give yourself another 15 minutes. If you the urge to, if the urge to close the trade before that final target is there, just say, all right, just five more minutes. Hit the timer. Give yourself five more minutes. If you can hold for five more minutes, you can hold for 10, you've got 15, et cetera. Set it, forget it. Set the trade, walk away, don't do anything. Same walking away, but this is kind of my limit orders in, my stop orders in, my targets in. I just need to, wherever happens, happens. I'm not managing it. I'm not meddling with it, not fiddling with it. I'm just waiting for the trade to take me out one way or another. Give yourself set time intervals to review. Talked about this. Every hour, come in, review the trade. Every 30 minutes, review the trade. Five minutes, 15, day, whatever time frame you're trading. Helps to not be in front of the screen all day long, like the walking away thing, but this time you're coming in to review the trade. Do I need to move the stop? Do I need to adjust things? Do I need to scale out the trade? Do I need to make some adjustments? But I can only make the adjustments at certain times and at certain price levels as well. Like, okay, it might be another 100 points on the NASDAQ. It might be another 50 pips, 20 pips, whatever. Set alerts and say, right, what's happened now? Do I need to make any adjustments? Do I need to move the stop up? What do I need to do? Okay, so summary here. Identify your potential runners before the trade. That's just so, so important. And I think it's missed by many traders. And if you do that, you're ahead of the game. Know when you're going to hold, when you're not. Prepare yourself mentally. Rehearse those emotions. Feel the urge to, oh, I need to take that trade. I want to take a trade off. And don't do it. If you rehearse that, prepare yourself mentally before the trade. And just when you're not trading, it's going to harden you and season you to the feeling of having the trade there and not taking it or not taking the trade off in the heat of the moment. Hack your way to holding trades, use timers, walk away, have those review points and just keep practicing. It's not something you can just fix all that and go, I'm going to hold trades. I'm going to hold the trades I want. I'm going to hold them yet. No problem is when well, we all have this problem or challenge, right? The weekend, like I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this and your list of stuff you're going to do to trade on Monday morning goes out the window, except that sometimes you're going to snatch at profits You've gone from maybe not holding trades to trying to hold trades and you're going to get it wrong. You're going to snatch your profits. You're going to plan a trade that should have been run and doesn't be. It's going to make all these mistakes. But if you commit to doing it for a certain period of time, you'll get better at it. It'll just become second nature. Like anything else you've done in trading in life, it starts out feeling, well, I'm going to do this, but actually you just commit to it and start to log your results and start to follow some of the things maybe I've suggested. Then you just get better and better at holding trades. And then it unlocks, it, you, you, as I said about the maths, it unlocks a different level of performance, different level of confidence. All sorts of things start to happen when you can start running trades because you start to believe, even if you've had a kind of rough patch and things aren't working, you know what? There's a trade around the corner that might be an absolute gem for me. I'm not gambling on it. I'm not kind of holding and hoping, but I have, I have the ability to run trades, have the ability to have those outlier days or outlier trades they're going to make up for perhaps some of the losses you've had recently if that was, you know, the, the kind of period of trading you've had, which happens to all traders, right? Okay, so let me get to the q and I hope that's helpful, guys. Um, if it is, I invite you to join my daily email, send out every morning. we nine, 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 ten thousand 10,000 people on there now. Uh, you can go to tradersmastermind.com forward slash email to join that. I will answer some questions now. I think my timing is not too bad. Okay, where are we? Just going to review those, have a little slurp of water. Send any questions in if you haven't yet put them in, guys. Uh, Sebastian says, never understood the phrase, cut your losers, your stop loss does that. No. But you know what? Let me bring these QA over here. So I'm actually looking at you guys. It's always a bit unnerving you know, watching someone who's looking out to some distance. I'm actually looking at my other screens, but uh, yeah, you're right, Seb. Sebastian, apologies. No one shortening your name without, without authority to do that. Sebastian, yes, uh, your stop should do that. Absolutely. Um, but many people remove the stop. Some people get rid of the stop completely. They move it out, they widen it. Um, 
and it's a fine line, right? This is probably a completely other topic. You don't want to be just uh, the, the trap that a lot of traders fall into is having to stop too tight. So a noise just pings you out, pings you out, pings you out, pings you out, pings you out. And that's pointless, right? It's the death by a thousand cuts syndrome. So you have to be wide enough to accommodate the noise, but not so wide that it's pointless and you're risking so much money. So yeah, you're right. Your stop should, should help you do that. But very often, many traders will hold the trade unnecessarily so um be too tight with the stop it's finding that sweet spot whereas the runners or the winners sorry you know that's when you kind of go listen let what will be will be man i'm on the road i'm on i'm on the journey the market's taking me i'm surfing this baby and wherever it goes it goes it comes back and stops me out fine but actually you know when you're right pressing your advantage in fact it's exactly what tom says in this book um but you you know it right it's just holding that trade and yes if you want to get more advanced you're adding to the position but for now you just want to hold that trade um, Gary says, how are you doing, Gary? Is there a compromise whereby you can try to hold the trade for a larger than usual time as a runner, but adjust the stop on all or part of the position so that if you get stopped out, you get stopped out a small profit or break even rather than a loss or use a small or only use a small position as a runner, like a quarter of the position, for example. Yes. And you've corrected yourself that. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Because that's another hack and tactic. You, know, you don't have to hold to get good at running trades and holding trades. You don't have to hold the whole lot. You can peel a little bit off. And actually, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you should hold the whole trade. Yeah, but if you're trying to get better at something, it's okay to not be perfect at it. If you're trying to get a good basketball player, you're going to miss shots. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. Yeah, great. So hacks you can do, take off half the position. If you kind of get a pulse in your favor, you get a momentum trade, goes from, poof, breaks out, take peel some off, drag the stop up and go, you know what? I've got half on or a quarter on what will be, will be. And it just starts to get you in used to holding trades a little bit longer. And like you say, Gary, which is another great idea is that, hey, let me, you know, split the stop up. So let's say you've got 10 units. Let me say, you know what? Actually, I'm going to put half of my stop here where it should be in half and tighter up or half wider and playing get a bit more strategic. Now don't overcomplicate things because you have the complicated stuff. You end up kind of second guessing yourself, but absolutely. Because in your plan, you say, right, I take half off here and I hold half or if like you just said a small position, I'll take two, two thirds of it off or 90% of it off. I'll take nine lots off and I'll hold one and I'll see where the one takes me. But then the key to that, is you go back and you look and you say, hey, on a trade that I've planned to hold, check, and I've held, check, what are the results of that one unit I held? Well, these are the results. Well, actually then, should I hold more? And then when you get comfortable holding one, you hold 20% of the position, you hold 30, you hold 40, you hold 50, until you're able to actually add to the position, which is kind of holding 100%, 110, 10, 20, et cetera. So yeah, great, great, great point, Gary. Thank you for bringing that one up. Absolutely. Anything you can do like that to kind of, sort your your mind out um it's good um barry says uh thanks mark thanks for your best webinar today thank you barry appreciate that i'm glad this one resonated with you buddy uh maybe we could talk a bit more about it on thursday yes yes definitely if you're a member of traders mastermind many members here we do our coaching call on thursday and i'm running that one this week so we can actually absolutely talk about that thank you for the suggestion um, this was definitely the talk I needed. Glad it was the right place at the right time. Regarding exiting a trade that is going against us, how do you balance exiting early with letting a trade breathe and potentially hitting a stop loss? Thanks. Do you know what? I actually, it, well, I was touching on this early, wasn't I? I think this is, a, this is a massive topic and actually it's a great idea. I think I'm going to do a whole um, deep dive into this. So maybe next webinar, the one after, it's a really good idea because it's an art. You know, you, you, it's so tempting to try and have that tight stop. And some trades do warrant that. Some trades don't. Letting a trade breathe, depending on the type of trade, it's momentum. You don't really want it to breathe. It's like I'm trading momentum. The thesis is momentum. Go, go, or don't go. You're trading reversal. You kind of have to let the thing wind, unwind a little bit. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated thing. It's not really the answer you want. So apologies, Barry, for not giving a kind of really good answer to that. But there is a balance there. And, and and it does depend on the on the uh, the trade you're taking. It does depend on the environment you're trading, the strategy, all this type of stuff. So I, I, won't, I will explore that. I've not forgotten that question. That's a really good question. I'll explore that um, in some more depth. Also, more questions. Gosh, I didn't realize I was scrolling. 
Um, Adrian says, Mark, can't you run the trade whilst raising the stop? Yeah, absolutely, Adrian. And actually, I recommend that. You know, if you've got a trade that's that's running on and on, you want to put your stop in a place where that thesis no longer thesis is no longer valid. So, you know, and then that depends, right? You've got to you've got to measure the impact of you being at the screen to 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 move the stop versus just holding the trade. That's why I think that reviewing at a certain period of time is great because if you're looking to hold the trade to the end of the day, say you come in every hour. You can raise your stop and come in and go, yeah, the trade's gone my favor. We've kind of put a, put a level of support in. We've pushed the highs and held. I'm going to pull my stop up below that support, or I'm going to pull my stop another 50 points or whatever it might be. And so you can start, absolutely, you know, you can lock in stuff as you go. Um, you know, sometimes though, you know, the market's really overextending. You're like, I don't really want to take this out. But I know that the nature of the beast is going a big spring stretch, a big contraction, but it still might go an uptrend. So you kind of go, I don't want to take it out, but I'm prepared for it to come back a lot. And so it's that game again of, you know, giving it some room, depending on what you're trying to achieve, um, tightening up as it starts to get closer to your target. If you're able to and you're there, sometimes if you're, you know, you're in a trade like, hey, here's my stop and you're walking away, you can't actively manage it because you don't want to be there meddling with the trade all the time. But yeah, short answer to that is you you can raise a stop and I think you, you absolutely should. Uh, Gary says, thank you. Cheers. Um Sebastian says, thanks, Mark. This is the first time I've heard a talk on this subject. It's my biggest issue at the moment. But it's defo, it's defo the next hurdle in the skill set I'm going to work on. What are your thoughts on opening more than one position per trade? I open three. Uh, well, yeah, glad you're working on it, but, uh, Sebastian. It's a, it's it's crucial. It's simple as that. You know, I can't pretend anything other than it's the most one of the most crucial skills out there um, to make this thing work. Uh, your thoughts on opening more than one position per trade? I open three. Well, it's just position size, right? If you open three trades, you're opening three times the position. Um, depends on how you, how you structure, I guess, in your mind. But if you let's say you're trading one unit or you open it with three units, that's kind of three positions. You can just close two at any one point. One at any one point, you've got three kind of peel off if you want. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And if you want to do that, kind of, I guess if you're on MT4 and you kind of want it to be three separate positions so that in your mind, you're kind of like, well, that's that bit, that's that bit, that's fine too. Whatever you need to do to kind of help you think differently and help you get over the hurdle, I think is is smart. You know, I've heard many stories over, over the years of traders doing all sorts of things to kind of hack themselves mentally and kind of get over the hurdle and do something a little bit differently just to kind of unlock the way of thinking. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, all right, ladies and gents, shall we? Oh, I miss, I think I've got everybody. Any other questions? Let me know. Otherwise, oh, we shall call it an evening there. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Uh, hope it's been valuable. Hope you've taken away a few little bits and pieces. That's my job and job done, hopefully. Right, back again in two weeks' time with a, another webinar with. Pepperstone. Thanks very much, ladies and gents. Goodbye and look forward to CPI tomorrow. See you later.